Yo, what's good everyone? It's MSC and today we're going to talk about the open beta for the mobile game that just released known as Persona 5 The Phantom X. So this game, I'm not gonna lie, as it says in the title, it's better than I thought because when this game was first revealed like I think a few years back, like 2022 I think, the game just looked like Persona 5, but on mobile and with different characters. I wasn't all that interested in this game at all. I just, like I said, thought it was just going to be Persona 5, but with gotcha elements and it's on mobile. But there is a bit more than that. Yes, at first glance, this game does just look like Persona 5 on mobile and someone just inserted their Chinese knockoff OCs in it. But when I got my hands on the game through the open beta that's only out right now in, I think, Korea, Taiwan, and China, I was pretty surprised at how much effort was put into this game. All of this for like some gotcha mobile game, but the thing is, this game isn't only on mobile, it is also on PCs. So like, you can actually play this game right now on PC. Uh, I'll leave like instructions in the description below, like a tutorial video, so you guys can watch and you guys can play it yourself. And there's also like an English patch because, you know, this game is in uh, Chinese. And there's like a program you can use that basically just like translates the game for you. Sometimes it's really whack though, and uh, I got a few laughs out of some of the really bad translation from this. But uh, it's playable. It's kind of weird how this game's subtitles and text is in Chinese and Taiwan and Korean and all that. Even though the voice acting is in Japanese. But I guess it kind of makes sense because this game was developed by Chinese developers. But anyway, yeah, this game, it was a lot more than I expected. It has a pretty in-depth story. It has its own original story with new characters, brand new characters. And it's more of like, I'd say, Persona 5 in a different timeline or universe or something. It's like, Persona 5, if Joker, Ryuji, all the characters we love, didn't exist and it was just some other characters. Think of like, I guess, man, this might be a bad comparison because it's not really an alternate timeline with this, but like Persona Trinity Soul, that's the kind of vibes I get from this, Persona Trinity Soul, which is basically just like, that anime was just Persona 3 in the future. But it's basically just like, imagine Persona 5, but with a different flavor in it, I guess. you can. That's like the best I can kind of explain it, I guess. The Phantom Thieves we know and love do appear in this game through gacha pulls, you can pull them and stuff, and I think there's like an event going on right now that has like a story crossover between the Persona 5X Phantom Thieves and the original Persona 5 Phantom Thieves, but I haven't tried that yet because, I'm gonna be real, I haven't got like too far into this game, but this is just like a quick first impressions video I'm doing. But yeah, this game is an interesting take on Persona 5. It's pretty much like, you know, we got the mementos, the palaces, it's kind of like sort of the same but there's a bit of different stuff in it and in terms of gameplay i say the gameplay is pretty much just the same as persona 5's the battle system is a bit different how the way they handle one mores and baton passes because after you like strike an enemy's weakness you can just immediately just switch to the next party member with the baton pass and then they'll like do an attack that strikes the weakness of another enemy it's a pretty cool concept and i think it works well for a mobile game but yeah, other than that, the battle system is actually pretty much the same. We got the all-out attacks, of course. The showtimes, but they're not called showtimes. I low-key forgot what they're actually called. But, um, yeah, they actually look really good. Like I said, this game, for a mobile game, it, it looks solid. Like, honestly, I could see this being a console game. This could have released on, like, PS4, PS3, which, of course, that's what Persona 5 originally released on. But... Yeah, mobile games are getting to that point where they're almost looking like, I guess, like last gen consoles, which is, I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm so glad this game released on PC because my phone would literally explode trying to run this game, like for real. But yeah, this game is pretty much what you expect from a normal Persona game. Good gameplay, good visuals, and uh, the characters, I gotta say, the characters are good. Uh, I can't say too much on it because I haven't met all the characters yet because apparently I heard there's like 20 phantom thieves in this game which is insane like 20? Like bro where are all these phantom thieves coming from bro? But the characters are alright most of them just look like characters we've already seen like of course the main protagonist wonder he just kind of just looks like to me 
uh, Joker and Kasumi combined, pretty much. Uh, he's just a standard Persona protagonist. He's silent, uh, and then, yeah, it's whatever. You already know my opinion on silent Persona protagonists. But, um, the character I actually do like in this game is Arai. I think that's how you say it, or AKA Closer. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But that's the character that I really like in this game because she's basically like, I'd say like Ryuji and On combined in terms of uh, personality and looks. And yeah, I think she's a pretty cool character. As for this owl character, I'm gonna be real, I low-key forgot this character's name. And not only that, but his name is so inconsistent due to the translation on the thing. Like, sometimes his name was Lucifer, sometimes his name was like, Luin Lure or something. Like, I, I don't know, bruh. But, he's like an owl. He's basically just Morgana 2.0. Just think Morgana, but less annoying, I I'd say. A more likable Morgana, I'd say that. Okay, you know what? Let's actually look up what this character's name actually is on Google, bro. Wait, so his name is actually Luffy? What? Like, Monkey D. Luffy? I'm not gonna lie. The game was calling him that for a second, but I thought that was just some mistranslation. Okay, and he also has another name, Rufuru. I, I can't tell which one's actually the code name, but I'm gonna assume that his code name is actually just Luffy, and his actual real name is Rufuru. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But yeah, like I said, Luffy is just basically just a less annoying Morgana. And as for the other character, Tomoko, I can't really say much about this character because uh, if we notice, pushed over train tracks. But so far, I think she's an alright character. I like her Phantom Thief design. It looks really cool. Yeah, her abilities are basically just psychic, kind of like Haru. And yeah, speaking of abilities, I need to talk about the character's abilities. So basically... The main character, Wonder, he has uh, gun ability and bless abilities, which is uh, pretty cool. How uh, I like how his persona looks too. As for Luffy, his persona's abilities are basically fire, and he's also a healer. So, yeah, in terms of gameplay as well, he's kind of Morgana 2.0, but, you know, without the wind. Not gonna lie, Luffy's all out attack animation is cold. Like, look at this, bruh. Now for Coaster's abilities, she basically just has electricity. I also like the animation that plays for her electric shark attack. It looks so nice. There's another character I got in the gacha pools named Katone, which she basically uses ice attacks, and I'm not gonna lie so far, she has the best showtime in the game. Like, it looks so good. And that's pretty much all the characters I got so far, because like I said, I didn't get too far in this game. I stopped at where Closer awakened her persona, and I fought the boss, and that was pretty much just where I stopped. So I haven't like actually pulled any good units yet, like, you know, the actual Phantom Thieves. And I heard that Joker is like probably the best starter unit right now. But in terms of the other Phantom Thieves, I have no opinion on them right now other than they just look cool. Speaking of things looking cool, I'm not gonna lie, the new Velvet Room and the new Velvet Room Attendant, Oh awesome. my god. This time, the Velvet Room is a whole aquarium, and I swear, there are so many ideas from this game that they could have just saved for Persona 6. Like, I swear. Closer could have just been a Persona 6 character. Like, come on, she could have been like the Chariot Confidant. That would have been fire. And the new Velvet Room Attendant, that definitely could have been the new Velvet Room Attendant in Persona 6. But one thing that's weird about this character compared to the other Velvet Attendants is that her eyes are, like, gray instead of yellow because every velvet room attendant we've seen at least in persona 3 through 5 they've always had like glowing yellow eyes but this one has gray eyes i might be looking a bit too much into it but uh yeah there, there's probably some lore going on between that the role that the velvet room plays in this game is basically you can level up your personas uh so far i haven't gotten to the part where you can actually fuse your personas i heard that you can actually fuse your personas once you level 27 and another thing the Velvet Room plays into is how you can just do gacha pulls. Uh, most of the gacha pulls is sometimes you'll get a Phantom Thief, and then most of the time the common pulls are just Personas. Which is expected from a Persona gacha game. Of course you're just gonna get Personas from gacha pulls. And I'm not gonna lie, I was never like a huge fan of gacha games. Anytime I'd pick up a gacha game, I'd always drop it. And to be honest, like... The longest time I've stayed on a gacha game was Black Clover M, because Black Clover M is a really good gacha game. So I uh, <laughs> I eventually dropped that too. I might get back into it, because I actually do like Black Clover M. Anyway, gacha pools aren't the only way you can get personas. You can get them by defeating the persona. Uh, it's kind of weird. You don't actually get the persona from doing the demon negotiations like, you know, Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, Shinigami Tensei, Shimigami. Why did I pronounce it like that? But anyway. 
Yeah, Shin Megami Tensei. And instead, you just defeat the Persona, and then it randomly joins you. It's like, oh yeah, man, uh, I actually need to join you, Wonder. And then, yeah, that, that's how it goes, which is cool. That's cool, that's cool. Even though I actually do like Demon Negotiations, I'm fine with them removing it since, you know, it's just a mobile gacha game. And other thing this game still kept was the social links because, of course, it can't be modern Persona without social links. So, like, you need social links. And I haven't gotten too far into social links. Most of them are just story related. But I heard the best social link, most important social link right now to do is the Velvet Room Attendant, which I keep calling her that, but I forgot her name. I think her name is Melio or something. I hope I pronounced that right. Melio. Yeah, apparently she's like the most important social link to do in the game because she gives you like benefits in the Velvet Room, which, you know, makes sense. But in terms of the real life social elements of the game, it's exactly how you expect Persona to be like. You walk around in the city. Shibuya is more open now. Like, you can actually go through the crossing, unlike, you know, in Persona 5 Royal, in Persona 5, where you don't actually go through the crossing, you just go straight to Central Street. But, um, yeah, there's like social stats and stuff. It actually tells you your progress on social stats. I'm glad they did that, because you actually know how close you are to actually just leveling up your social stat now. That's really cool. And another interesting thing about this game, you can actually level up outside of the metaverse. So like, when you're in the real life, you can actually just level up. It, I, that's unheard of, I'm not gonna lie. Because, you know, of course you level up in Persona games through dungeon crawling. Which I ain't complaining, because that's a really cool concept that I think they could incorporate into Persona 6, but that might make the game a bit too broken, because, you know, you're leveling up, grinding throughout the freaking uh, dungeons, as well as in real life. And you'll be, like, over level most of the time, but, you know, they, they might find a workaround around that. But one thing I do hope they incorporate into Persona 6 that's from this game is how you can change your outfit in the real life. Because in this game, you can select which outfit you want to wear in real life instead of just, you know, summer outfit, winter outfit, and then casual outfit. You can actually just like choose what to wear, which I think is pretty cool. It's a neat concept. But I just ended up talking about Persona 6 wishlist all over again. But anyway, back to the actual Persona 5X. I'd like to talk about, I guess, the story a bit. I'm not going to go too much into it. Because, you know, like I said, I am not that far into the story. I'm like four hours into the game so far. Basically, the game starts the exact way as actual Persona 5. Like, it, it, there, there's no difference. There's literally no difference. It starts the exact same way. Except for when Joker, after, you know, he defeats the freaking uh, demon or whatever. And then, normally what would happen is that, oh yeah, Joker has to escape. Or if you're playing Royal, Kasumi appears. No, instead, this dude Wonder comes in starts fighting Joker, and it just looks like some fan animation, fanfic of some Persona OC fighting Joker, and somehow Joker loses to this bum. It's like, what? Bro, that ain't my goat. That is not my goat. But it turns out it was just a dream by Wonder, like he was like dreaming all this, the opening sequence to Persona 5 and all that. And then, uh, yeah, he goes to school, uh, you know, random Sandra Persona stuff happened. This time he's not an exchange student, he's just like a normal student that goes to the school. And then, uh, yeah, you talk to friends and all that. And um, while you're walking home from school to get on the train, you just see like some random woman on the rooftop and then she jumps off. And for some reason, none of the people that like witnessed it even cares what happened to that woman when she jumped off. Like, it, it was weird. It was so weird looking at this for the first time. I was like, what? Like, it's like the protagonist was like the only one who was actually just looking at that and cared after that. Like, it gets weirder. You're on a train, you're just chilling, and then this random guy just comes through the the freaking train on a bike and just runs people over in the train on the bike. And then he comes to just run you over, but before he like tries to run you over, you go into the metaverse. And uh, yeah, yeah, you go through, you meet freaking uh, Luffy. And uh, I'm trying to remember all this because this video is hella unscripted. But uh, you awaken your persona from near death. He teaches you about personas and shadows. But I think it's interesting how this time they started off with just, you know, you end up in mementos instead of a palace, which I, I think that's a nice twist. But after all of that went down, you, after you, you know, you awaken, you awaken your persona and then you defeat the shadows. The next day, 
you, you randomly run into this person you see in like Shibuya station of some random businessman just pushing women for some reason on the floor. And it's like, when I first saw this, I was so confused. I was like, what the hell is even going on? It's like this man was in GTA, like, you know in GTA when you're just running, you just randomly just pushing pedestrians on the floor for like no apparent reason? That's what it looked like to me. But apparently this guy is allowed to get away with this because the police can't do anything about it because like they know like something's wrong with his mind from like the distorted desires or something. But then later you find out from Luffy that this guy has a palace because like his whole distorted desires thing, you know, like normal Persona 5 stuff, you gotta steal his heart and all that, steal his treasure. But this man actually goes too far because he ends up pushing Tomiko onto the train tracks and she was just like laying there like she's knocked out on the train tracks like the train can literally just come anytime and just like run her over and yeah there's nothing we can actually do about it but then later we find out this man was like closer's baseball coach from like elementary school or something and he's like really mad at closer for um i think it was like beating him at baseball when she was in elementary school and that just like ruined his reputation or something he's like you're the reason why i quit baseball and <laughs> it's it's so weird to me bro i can't but we end up going to the palace and then we just, you know, explore uh, this baseball coach's palace. I'm not gonna lie, I low-key actually forgot his name, too. But, uh, yeah, and then eventually Closer ends up in the palace, just like On did. Like, he got caught up in the stuff, into the metaverse. And then, uh, yeah, Closer gets captured, ah! and then she awakens her persona. And that's pretty much just where I stopped. But yeah, not gonna lie, it's an interesting story. I know I probably like explained way too much on it, and I probably explained the story like really badly, but yeah, that's pretty much what I got from it. Uh, it's an interesting story so far, and I can't wait to play more of it. And I'm really curious about that new story event for, you know, they meet the original Phantom Thieves for Persona 5. I'm really curious about that. Cause I saw a scene of just Wonder meets Joker, and then like Joker was like actually talking. And I was like, wait, what? Joker speaking full sentences in the actual game? Ain't no way. And then we get closer meets Ryuji, and I feel like they would actually be best friends because like, they're, they're made for each other. But anyway, that's enough of my rambling on Persona 5X. This video went on longer than I expected because this was, this was just supposed to be me just having my first impressions and first thoughts on Persona 5X. In short, I think Persona 5X is pretty cool. It's a good game. Uh, I'm not that much into gacha games, but I'll try to actually like be consistent with this game because I'm like this game's really interesting. And yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more content on Persona 5X because I'm thinking of actually doing more content on this game on just doing you know gacha pools, events, challenges, and all that. But anyway, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, yeah, it's going on for too long, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.